Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So, at an international gynecologist convention, two American doctors and a European doctor were having drinks and talking about work. After a few too many, they started telling stories. The first American decides to talk about the strangest patients he had had. This woman's vulva was like an apple, he explained. The second American shakes his head, that's nothing. I had a patient with a vulva like a peach. The European doctor, not wanting to be outdone by his new American friends, said, We too talk about this. I found a woman with one like a watermelon. The first American laughs and the second American frowns and says, That's impossible. How would she walk? The European doctor looks puzzled before saying, Oh, you Americans, always obsessed with size. I thought we were talking about flavor. <laughs> so once upon a time, there was a man named Bob who loved to travel the world. On one of his adventures, he found himself in a remote area of Africa where he decided to go on a safari tour. While on the tour, Bob's jeep suddenly crashed and he was the only survivor. Unfortunately, the accident caused Bob to lose both his arms, eyes, and manhood. Luckily, the local doctors were able to help him. They replaced his arms with the arms of a gorilla and his eyes with the eyes of a tiger. But they were unable to find a suitable replacement for his manhood. After much consideration, they decided to give him an elephant trunk instead. Bob was grateful for the help, but he couldn't help feeling a bit uneasy about his new appendage. Nonetheless, he returned to his home in New York City, where he tried to adjust to his new life. Three years later, Bob was walking down the street when he saw the doctors who had operated on him. Excited to see them, Bob approached them and they started catching up. The doctors asked Bob how he was doing, and he replied, Well, my gorilla arms are fantastic. I can now climb buildings with ease. The doctors were pleased to hear this and asked about his tiger eyes. Bob replied, They're incredible. I can see for miles around the city. Then, the doctors asked about Bob's elephant trunk manhood, and he replied, Well... I'm still getting used to it, but every time I get an erection, I start to feel a bit hungry. The doctors looked at each other puzzled, wondering what was wrong. Bob then continued, Yeah, my new manhood wants to eat peanuts every time I get excited. <laughs> so a bloke doctor started chatting to a female doctor at a medical convention and ended up asking her out to dinner. She said yes. And later that night, they met up at the poshest restaurant in town. Just before the entree arrived, the chick said she had to wash her hands. Then before the mains came around, she excused herself to wash her hands again. Things worked out, and they headed back to the fella's place, where the chick once again said she had to wash her hands before they started rooting. The bloke doctor pounded her as hard as he could, and seconds after he filled her up with a load of spoonter, the chick doctor once again went off to wash her hands. When she got back, the fella said, I bet you're a surgeon. The woman confirmed this and asked how he guessed, to which the bloke explained that it was because she was always washing her hands. Well, I bet you're an anesthesiologist, said the chick. Wow, that's amazing. How did you guess that? Replied the dude. Because I didn't feel a thing. Snapped the woman. <laughs> so a man calls the doctor and says, Doc, I think my son has gonorrhea. The only woman he screwed is our maid. The doctor smiled and said, Okay, don't be hard on him. He's just a kid. Get him in here right away and I'll take care of him. The man, still worried as hell, says, But Doc, our maid is good-looking lady, so you know. I've been screwing the maid, too. 
and I've got the same symptom he has. The doctor, still not worried a bit, just said, Just come in with your son, and I'll fix you both up. The man was like, Well, I think my wife now has it too. But this time, the doctor instantly started to sound mad and worried and said, You bastard. That means we've all got it. <laughs> so one morning, a man woke up feeling very sick. He had a headache, sore throat, and his body was aching all over. He knew he needed to see a doctor, but he was feeling too weak to get out of bed. Eventually, he mustered up enough strength to call his friend, who immediately came to his house to take him to the doctor. After waiting for what seemed like an eternity in the doctor's office, the man was finally called in to see the doctor. The doctor asked him all sorts of questions about his symptoms and then examined him thoroughly. Finally, the doctor made his diagnosis. The man had the flu. The doctor then told the man that he had a shot of medicine that would kill all of the germs in his body. However, unbeknownst to the doctor and the man, there were three germs already living inside the man's body. As the doctor was preparing to give the man the shot, the three germs began to panic. The first germ said, Did you hear what that doctor said? He has a medicine that will kill all of us. What are we going to do? The second germ said, Let's just wait and see what else he has to say. Just then, the doctor turned to the man and said, Before I give you this medicine, I need to ask you an important personal question. The man replied, Okay, Doc, what do you want to know? The doctor said, How often do you have a bowel movement? The man said, That's no problem there, Doc. I go to the bathroom every day at 8, 20 a.m. I'm regular as a clock. I don't need laxatives or castor oil. I've been going to the bathroom every day for 20 years at 8, 20. The doctor then warned the man that the shot would kill every germ in his body and proceeded to administer the shot. The three germs had another meeting. They were very worried about the shot. The first germ said, screw that shot. I'm staying. I'm going to hide behind the heart. The second germ said, well, if you're staying, I'm staying too. I'm going to hide behind the liver. The third germ said, you do what you want. I'm taking the 820 out of here in the morning. <laughs> so a doctor walks into a confessional booth and says, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. The priest replies, Tell me your sins, my child. The doctor sighs deeply and says, Father, I've slept with a few of my patients. It was extremely wrong and extremely unethical. I'm so disappointed in myself and haven't been able to eat or sleep properly for several days now. I'm feeling incredibly guilty about the whole situation. The priest thinks for a moment, tells him, you must learn to forgive yourself. The doctor asks, but how, Father, how can I overcome this sin? The priest says, you're not the first doctor to sleep with a patient and you won't be last. The doctor nods in consent while the priest absolves him. The doctor tells him, Thank you so much, Father. What a relief. I feel much better about this now. As they exit the confessional, the priest looks at the doctor and asks, Sorry to bother you like this, Doc, but I have had a terribly sore throat the last few days. Do you think you could take a look at it for me? The doctor says, I'd love to help, but I'm a veterinarian. <laughs> so, Paddy, a man with a penchant for good health, saunters into his doctor's office and asks, Do you think I'll live to be a hundred? The doctor, intrigued by Paddy's enthusiasm for longevity, inquires, Well, that depends. Do you drink? Paddy, with a twinkle in his eye, replies, Oh no, sir. I abstain from all alcohol. Soft drinks, too. I just drink plenty of fresh water. Do you smoke? The doctor probes further. No, sir. 
never smoked in my life, and I steer clear of any place with secondhand smoke, Patty declares, beaming with pride. Do you eat a lot of sugary and greasy foods? The doctor continues. Not at all, sir. I meticulously watch my diet and caloric intake, ensuring I consume a bounty of vegetables, Patty says, chest puffed out. Do you go to parties? Stay up late. Are you sexually promiscuous? The doctor asks, now genuinely curious. No, not at all. Early to bed and early to rise. And abstinence is key, Patty proudly proclaims. The doctor, now slightly amused and bewildered, raises an eyebrow and asks, So, why exactly do you want to live to be a hundred? <laughs> so a woman visits the gynecologist for a routine checkup. She places her feet in the stirrups, and the doctor begins his examination. Suddenly, he exclaims, Wow, you got a very deep cave down there. I have never seen anything like it before. The woman retorts, You don't have to tell me twice. The doctor, with a sly grin, replies, I didn't. <laughs> so a young doctor had moved out to a small community to replace a doctor who was retiring. The older doctor suggested the young one accompany him on his rounds so the community could become used to a new doctor. At the first house, a woman complained, I've been a little sick to my stomach. The older doctor said, Well, you've probably been overdoing the fresh fruit. Why don't you cut back on the amount you've been eating and see if that does the trick? As they left, the younger man said, You didn't even examine that woman. How'd you come to your diagnosis so quickly? I didn't have to. You noticed I dropped my stethoscope on the floor in there. When I bent over to pick it up, I noticed a half dozen banana peels in the trash. That was what was probably making her sick. The younger doctor said, pretty clever. I think I'll try that at the next house. Arriving at the next house, they spent several minutes talking with a younger woman. She complained that she just didn't have the energy she once did. I'm feeling terribly run down lately. You've probably been doing too much extra work for the church, the younger doctor told her. Perhaps you should cut back a bit and see if that helps. As they left, the elder doc said, Your diagnosis is almost certainly correct, but how did you arrive at it? Well, just like you did at the last house. I dropped my stethoscope, and when I bent down to retrieve it, I noticed the preacher under the bed. <laughs> so, a woman starts dating a doctor. Before too long, she becomes pregnant, and they don't know what to do. About nine months later, just about the time she's going to give birth, a priest goes into the hospital for a prostate gland infection. The doctor says to the woman, I know what we'll do. After I've operated on the priest, I'll give the baby to him and tell him it was a miracle. Do you think it will work? She asks the doctor. It's worth a try, he says. So the doctor delivers the baby and then operates on the priest. After the operation, he goes in to the priest and says, Father, you're not going to believe this. What? says the priest. What happened? You gave birth to a child, but that's impossible. I just did the operation, insists the doctor. It's a miracle. Here's your baby. About 15 years go by, and the priest realizes that he must tell his son the truth. One day, he sits the boy down and says, Son, I have something to tell you. I'm not your father, the son says. What do you mean you're not my father? The priest replies, I'm your mother. The archbishop is your father. <laughs> so a woman was obsessed with plastic surgery. Her doctor told her a new procedure had been developed. They put a knob on the back of your neck, and every time you see a wrinkle, 
Turn it one click to the right, and the wrinkle will disappear. She came in right away and had the procedure done. A few weeks later, she was having some issues and visited her doc. What's wrong, miss? He said. Well, I now have these huge bags under my eyes, said the woman. The doctor replied, Miss, those aren't bags. Those are your breasts. Oh, said the woman, dumbfounded. What was your other issue? Asked the doctor. The woman paused for a moment, then said, Well, never mind. That explains the goatee. <laughs> so a very prestigious cardiologist died and was given a very elaborate funeral by the hospital where he worked for most of his life. A huge heart covered in flowers stood behind the casket during the service as all the doctors from the hospital sat in awe. Following the eulogy, the heart opened and the casket rolled inside. The heart then closed, sealing the doctor inside the beautiful heart forever. At that point, one of the mourners burst into laughter. When all eyes stared at him, he said, I'm so sorry. I was just thinking of my own funeral. I'm a gynecologist. <laughs> so a surgeon was checking on a patient who had a hernia operation three days before. The doctor asked the man why he had not gotten out of bed. I hurt, the man said. You don't know how it feels. I know exactly how it feels, the doctor said. I had the same procedure last month, and I was back at work two days later. There's no difference in our operations. Oh yes, there is, said the patient. You had a different surgeon. <laughs> So a little old lady of 90 years old goes to the doctor, complaining of terrible flatulence. She tells him she is otherwise in perfect health, but the constant wind is very uncomfortable. She adds, but I'm so grateful that at least it isn't embarrassing. You see, the remarkable thing is, it's always completely silent and it doesn't smell at all. You would have no idea but I've actually passed wind at least 15 times just during this appointment. The doctor agrees, that is indeed remarkable, and he prescribes the old lady a course of tablets and tells her to come back the next week. When she returns, she isn't happy. She tells the doctor that she doesn't think the tablets he prescribed have done her any good at all. She still passes wind just as much, and although it is still completely silent, now it smells absolutely terrible. The doctor nods. Excellent. Now we've cleared up your sinus problems. Let's see what we can do about your hearing. <laughs> so a man was hunting when a gust of wind blew. The gun fell over and discharged, shooting him in the genitals. Several hours later, lying in a hospital bed, he was approached by his doctor. Well, sir, I have some good news and some bad news, the doctor said. The good news is that you are going to be okay. The damage was local to your groin. There was very little internal damage, and we were able to remove all of the buckshot. What's the bad news? Asked the hunter. The bad news is that there was some pretty extensive buckshot damage done to your member, which left quite a few holes in it. I'm going to have to refer you to my sister. Well, I guess that isn't too bad. The hunter replied, Is your sister a plastic surgeon? Not exactly, answered the doctor. She's a flute player in the Boston Symphony Orchestra. She's going to teach you where to put your fingers so you don't piss in your eye. <laughs> so, a man went to a doctor and expressed his concern about his girlfriend being pregnant, despite the couple always using protection. The doctor thought about it for a moment, then began to tell a story to the man. There was once a hunter who always carried a gun with him wherever he went, the doctor said. One day, he grabbed his umbrella instead of his gun and headed out. Suddenly, a lion appeared in front of him. 
to scare the lion. The hunter pretended his umbrella was a gun and shot the lion, killing it. The man replied, that's nonsense. Someone else must have shot the lion. Good, you understood the story, the doctor said. Next patient, please. <laughs> so an Englishman, a French, and a Congolese were expecting to receive their babies from the ward. The doctor comes out with three nurses, each carting a baby. Gentlemen, I'm afraid I have some bad news, says the doctor. There was a mix-up and I'm afraid we cannot determine which babies are whose. Just then, the Englishman grabs the cart with the darkest baby and dashes for the door. Sir, what are you doing? Shouts the doctor. I ain't raising no goddamn Frenchman. <laughs> so an 80-year-old man goes for a physical. All of his tests come back with normal results. The doctor says, George, everything looks great. How are you doing mentally and emotionally? Are you at peace with God? George replies, God and I are tight. He knows I have poor eyesight. He's fixed it. So when I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, poof, the light goes on. When I'm done, poof, the light goes off. Wow, that's incredible, the doctor says. A little later in the day, the doctor calls George's wife. Ethel, he says, George is doing fine. But I had to call you because I'm in awe of his relationship with God. Is it true that he gets up during the night and poof, the light goes on in the bathroom. And when he's done, poof, the light goes off. Oh, sweet Jesus, exclaims Ethel. He's pissing in the refrigerator again. <laughs> so, a girl goes to the doctor's office for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, he notices a red H on her chest. How did you get that mark on your chest? Asks the doctor. Oh, my boyfriend went to Harvard. And he's so proud of it that he never takes off his sweatshirt. Even when we make love, she replies. A couple of days later, another girl comes in for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, he notices a blue Y on her chest. How did you get that mark on your chest? Asks the doctor. Oh, my boyfriend went to Yale, and he's so proud of it that he never takes off his sweatshirt. Even when we make love, she replies. A couple of days later, another girl comes in for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, he notices a green M on her chest. Do you have a boyfriend at Michigan? Asks the doctor. She replies, no, but I have a girlfriend at Wisconsin. Why do you ask? <laughs> so after his mother-in-law lost her job, a man decided to offer her a place to stay until she got back on her feet. However, just a week later, he returned home to find her lying unconscious on the floor. Panicked, he called 911 and watched as the ambulance took her away to the hospital. He immediately called his wife to tell her the news and ask her to cut her business trip short. After arriving at the hospital, the man nervously paced outside the surgery, waiting for any news on his mother-in-law's condition. Finally, the doctor emerged and the man eagerly approached him hoping for good news. However, the doctor had some bad news to share first. Your mother-in-law had a massive stroke, the doctor began solemnly. Unfortunately, she has lost the ability to speak and can only cackle like a chicken. The man's face fell at this news, but the doctor continued. Additionally, she has lost all motor control in her arms and legs. She won't be able to walk or feed herself and will require three meals of baby food a day for the rest of her life. The man's heart sank even further, but the doctor wasn't done yet. She will also be incontinent and require diapers for the rest of her life. You will need to change her and clean her several times a day. The man nods, processing all this information in his brain, then looks to the doctor and asks, 
that's some pretty bad news. But you said you had some good news. What's the good news? The good news is, I'm just joking with you, he said. She actually died. <laughs> so it was a beautiful day. And at a little fish restaurant, a cry suddenly goes up. My son, my son is choking. Someone help. Many of the diners try all kinds of techniques, but none work, and the son's face is quickly turning blue. Then a man from a nearby table stands up and says, Don't worry, I have experience with these kinds of things. He walks over calmly to the boy, leans down and grabs him hard in the testicles. He squeezes and a fishbone comes flying out of the mouth of the child. But he is still choking. So the man takes a step back and kicks the boy savagely in the ribs. Another bone flies out and the child can suddenly breathe. Everyone cheers and claps the man on the back as he slowly walks back to his table and sits down. Thank you, thank you, cries the happy mother and father of the boy. Are you a doctor? No, says the man. I work for the tax department. <laughs> so one day, the phone rings, and the lady of the house, Mrs. Sanders, answers with a cheerful hello. Mrs. Sanders, please, the voice on the other end requests. Speaking, Mrs. Sanders replies with a hint of curiosity. This is Dr. Jones calling from St. Agnes Hospital Laboratory. The voice continues. When your husband's doctor sent his biopsy to the lab last week, a quirky mix-up occurred. We received a biopsy from another Mr. Sanders as well. Now, we're in a bit of a pickle, and we're not entirely sure which one belongs to your husband. Regardless, the news isn't too peachy. A nervous Mrs. Sanders inquires. What do you mean? Well, says Dr. Jones, one of the specimens tested positive for Alzheimer's, and the other one tested positive for HIV. The catch is, we can't distinguish which is which. Mrs. Sanders, now on edge, asks, that's dreadful. Can't you just redo the tests? Normally, we could, but here's the kicker. Medicare will only foot the bill for these expensive tests once, Dr. Jones explains. Panic sets in as Mrs. Sanders frets. What am I supposed to do now? The Medicare help desk recommended her a solution saying, drop your husband off somewhere in the middle of town. If he finds his way home, don't sleep with him. <laughs> so an Irishman goes to the doctor, who after examining him says, you have some problems with your heart, but if you take these tablets, I think it will be okay. So the doctor gives the man the tablets and the patient asks, Do I have to take them every day? No, replies the doctor. Take one on the Monday. Skip the Tuesday. Take one on the Wednesday. Skip the Thursday and go on like that. Two weeks later, the doctor is walking down the street and he sees the patient's wife. Hello, Mrs. Murphy, he says. How's your husband? Oh, he died of a heart attack, says Mrs. Murphy. I'm very sorry to hear that, says the doctor. I thought if he took those tablets, he would be all right. Oh, the tablets were fine, says Mrs. Murphy. It was all the bloody skipping that killed him. <laughs> so an American man went to China and had fun with many of their ladies, while not using protection the entire time he was there. A week after arriving back home in the States, he wakes one morning to find his manhood covered with bright green and purple spots. Horrified, he immediately goes to see a doctor. The doctor, never having seen anything like this before, orders some tests and tells the man to return in two days for the results. The man returns a couple of days later and the doctor says, I've got bad news for you. You've contracted Mongolian VD. 
It's very rare and almost unheard of here in the U.S. We know very little about it. The man looks a little perplexed and says, Well, give me a shot or something and fix me up, Doc. The doctor answers, I'm sorry, there's no known cure. We're going to have to amputate your wainer. The man screams in horror, Absolutely not! I want a second opinion. The doctor replies, Well, it's your choice. Go ahead, if you want, but surgery is your only option. The next day, the man seeks out a Chinese doctor, figuring that he'll know more about the disease. The Chinese doctor examines his thing and proclaims, Ah, yes, Mongolian VD. Very rare disease. The guy says to the doctor, Yeah, yeah, I already know that, but what can we do? My American doctor wants to cut it off. The Chinese doctor shakes his head and laughs. Stupid American doctors always want to amputate. Make more money that way. No need to amputate. Oh, thank God. The man exclaims. Yes, says the Chinese doctor. Wait, two weeks. Fall off by itself. <laughs> so an American, a Scot, and a Canadian were in a terrible car accident. They were all brought to the same emergency room, but all three of them died before they arrived. Just as they were about to put the toe tag on the American, he stirred and opened his eyes. Astonished, the doctors and nurses present asked him what happened. Well, said the American, I remember the crash, and then there was a beautiful light, and then the Canadian and the Scot and I were standing at the gates of heaven. St. Peter approached us and said that we were all too young to die and asked for a donation of $50 so we could return to the earth. So of course I pulled out my wallet and gave him the $50, and the next thing I knew I was back here. That's amazing, said one of the doctors. But what happened to the other two? Last I saw them, replied the American. The Scot was haggling over the price, and the Canadian was waiting for the government to pay for his. <laughs> so a man was feeling unsatisfied with the size of his intimate parts and decided to visit a doctor. He wanted to know if there was any way to enlarge it. After evaluating the man's condition, the doctor told him that there was a new procedure available that involved replacing his manhood with the trunk of a baby elephant. The man, filled with excitement, agreed to the procedure and underwent the operation. Several weeks later, after the incision had fully healed, he went on a date with a woman. As they were seated at a restaurant, the man's new elephant trunk suddenly reached up from under the table, grabbed a bread roll, and disappeared back under the table with it. The man was mortified by the sudden display, but his date was completely in awe. That's amazing, she exclaimed. Can you do that again? The man, still embarrassed, replied, I'd love to, but I don't think I can fit another bread roll up there. <laughs> so once upon a time, there was a man named Bill who, despite being moderately successful in his career, found himself grappling with a peculiar problem as he aged. He began to suffer from excruciating headaches that not only affected his personal hygiene, but also took a toll on his love life. Desperate for a solution, Bill sought the help of various specialists, until one day he finally met a doctor who could provide an answer. The doctor explained to Bill that he had a rare condition in which his testicles pressed against the base of his spine, causing immense pressure and, consequently, the unbearable headaches. The only way to relieve this pressure was to undergo a castration. Bill was understandably devastated by the news, but decided he had no choice but to go through with the operation. After the surgery, Bill felt as though a fog had lifted from his mind, but he couldn't help feeling incomplete. As he walked down the street, 
He realized that this could be an opportunity for a fresh start. He decided to treat himself to a new suit and entered a men's clothing store. The salesman, with a keen eye, sized him up and said, let's see, size 44 long. Bill laughed and replied, that's right, how did you know? It's my job, the salesman replied with a smile. Bill tried on the suit and it fit perfectly. The salesman then suggested a new shirt and Bill, feeling confident, agreed. The salesman, once again displaying his expertise, said, let's see, 34 sleeve and 16 and a half neck. Bill was astonished. That's right. How did you know? It's my job, the salesman said once more. Bill tried on the shirt, and it fit like a glove. Encouraged by this success, he decided to buy new shoes as well. The salesman, without missing a beat, said, let's see, nine and a half. Bill was amazed. That's right. How did you know? It's my job, the salesman repeated. Bill slipped on the shoes and found that they were a perfect match. Feeling bold, Bill agreed to the salesman's suggestion of new underwear. The salesman stepped back, took a look at Bill's waist and said, let's see, size 36. Bill laughed and said, no, I've worn size 34 since I was 18 years old. The salesman shook his head in disbelief. You can't possibly wear a size 34. It would press your testicles up against the base of your spine and give you one hell of a headache. <laughs> so an artist asked a gallery owner if there had been any interest in her paintings that were on display. Well, I have good news and bad news, the owner responded. The good news is that a gentleman noticed your work and wondered if it would appreciate in value after your death. I told him it would, and he bought all ten of your paintings. That's wonderful, the artist exclaimed. What's the bad news? The gentleman was your doctor. <laughs> so once upon a time, there was a man with a rather unusual problem that was causing quite a stir in his life. You see, he had an astonishingly long 25-inch manhood. While this might sound like an enviable situation to some, it turned out to be quite a burden for the poor man. Moving around with such an appendage proved to be a Herculean task, and to make matters worse, it caused him tremendous knee problems due to the excessive weight he had to carry between his legs. One day, he decided he couldn't bear the struggles and discomfort any longer so he mustered up the courage to visit a specialized doctor. He walked into the doctor's office and with a slightly awkward smile said, Doctor, I have a rather unique problem that's affecting my life. My, my manhood is just too long. The doctor, being no stranger to peculiar medical cases, gave the man a compassionate look and began a careful examination. Ah, I see what you mean the doctor said, trying to hide his astonishment. Your manhood is indeed remarkably long, and it's causing issues with your posture and putting undue strain on your knees. Desperate for a solution, the man implored. Please, doc, tell me there's something you can do about it. The doctor nodded thoughtfully. Fear not, my friend. We have a surgical procedure that can safely reduce the size of your member, making it more manageable and relieving your knee pain. It will give you a more normal-sized manhood, and I believe it should help your posture as well. Considering the options, the man contemplated for a moment and then firmly declared, All right, I can't take this agony anymore. Let's do it. Perform the surgery, Doc. Later, in the operating room, the doctor gathered a team of experts to discuss the best approach for the delicate operation. As they huddled together, exchanging opinions, ideas, and jokes about the rather peculiar situation, the atmosphere lightened somewhat despite the seriousness of the procedure at hand. Dr. Brown, 
a seasoned surgeon chimed in. We could consider removing a section from the base. That way, we can preserve sensitivity at the tip while addressing the issues caused by its length. Dr. Stevens, the urologist, had a different perspective. Alternatively, he suggested, we could take a section from the middle. This way, we reduce the risk of complications related to reproductive function by maintaining a safe distance from the testicles. Dr. Marshall, the plastic surgeon, also had a valuable input. Another option is to remove a section from the end. Since he's already circumcised, it should make the scar easier to hide. As they deliberated, trying to reach a consensus, the nurse, who had been listening attentively, suddenly raised her hand with a tearful expression. Wait, wait, she interjected. Before we proceed with any of these plans, can't we just consider making his legs longer instead? <laughs> so a man in his 50s visits the doctor. I just can't take it anymore, doc, he says, wincing. I stand at the urinal for 20 minutes and nothing happens. Is there something I can take? I'll tell you what you can take, the doctor snarls. A cold dose of reality. Do you have any idea what's happening out there? Global warming is destroying the planet. Supervolcanoes are waking from dormancy. We're on the verge of a nuclear war and nothing can stop it. Visibly shaken, the man looks down and realizes he's pissed his pants. Ashamed, but relieved, he thanks the doctor profusely. No trouble at all, the doctor chuckles. All you needed was a little dire rhetoric. <laughs> so a Dublin doctor wanted to go fishing, so he approached his apprentice, Murphy. Murphy, I'm going fishing tomorrow, and I don't want to close the clinic. I want you to take care of all my patients. Not a problem, doctor. I'll do my best, sir, answered Murphy. The doctor returned the following day. So, Murphy, how was your day? Murphy told him that he took care of three patients. The first one had a headache, so I gave him paracetamol. Bravo, Murphy lad, and the second one, asked the doctor. The second one had indigestion, so I gave him Gaviscon, said Murphy. Bravo, bravo, you're good at this. And what about the third one? Asked the doctor. Doctor, I was sitting here and suddenly the door flew open and a young, gorgeous woman burst in. Like a bolt out of the blue, she tore off her clothes, taking off everything including her bra and panties. And she lay on the table and spread her legs. And then she shouted loudly, Oh, please, doctor, help me. For the love of St. Patrick, for five years now, I haven't seen any man. The doctor gasped and asked, Oh, no, Murphy, Tundaran, Joseph, Mary, and Lord Jesus. What did you do? The only thing I could do, doctor. I put drops in her eyes. <laughs> so Murphy's old lady had been pregnant for some time, and now the time had come. He brought her to the doctor, and the doctor began to deliver the baby. She had a little boy, and the doctor looked over at Murphy and said, Hey, Murph, you just had you a son. Murphy got excited by this, but just then the doctor spoke up and said, Hold on, we ain't finished yet. The doctor then delivered a little girl. He said, Hey, Murph, you got you a daughter. She's a pretty little thing too. Murphy got kind of puzzled by this, and then the doctor said, Hold on, we ain't got done yet. The doctor then delivered another boy and said, Murph, you just had yourself another boy. Murphy said to the doctor, Doc, what caused all of them babies? The doctor said, You never know, Murph. 
It was probably something that happened during conception, Murphy said. Ah, uh, yeah, during conception. When Murph and his wife went home with their three children, he sat down with his wife and said, Honey, you remember that night that we ran out of Vaseline and we had to use that three-in-one oil? She said, Yeah, I remember that night. Murph said, I'll tell you. It's a good thing we didn't use WD-40. <laughs> so, a middle-aged woman sought help from her doctor. All my husband does is complain that I never want to sleep with him. And he's right, too. I have no desire at all. The doctor gave her a prescription and told her to return for a visit in two weeks. After the two weeks were up, she bounced, smiling into his office. Those pills were great, Doc. I'm doing it twice a night now. That's wonderful, said the doctor. What does your husband say now? How should I know? She replied, I ain't been home yet. <laughs> so an old snake goes to see his doctor and says, I need something for my eyes. I can't see very well these days. The doctor fixes him up with a pair of glasses and tells him to return in two weeks. The snake comes back in two weeks and tells the doctor that he's very depressed. What's the problem? Asks the doctor. Didn't the glasses help you? The glasses are fine, doc, answers the snake dejectedly. Thing is, I just discovered I've been living with a garden hose the past two years. <laughs> So a woman and a baby were in the doctor's examining room, waiting for the doctor to come in. The doctor arrived, examined the baby, checked his weight, and found it somewhat below normal. The doctor asked if the baby was breastfed or bottle-fed. Breastfed, the woman replied. Well, strip down to your waist, the doctor asked. She did. He pressed, kneaded, rolled, cupped and pinched both breasts in a detailed, rigorously thorough examination. Motioning for her to get dressed, he said, No wonder this baby is underweight. You don't have any milk. I know, she said. I'm his grandmother, but I'm glad I came. <laughs> so as the busy hospital staff rushed about their daily tasks, a blonde woman came in, clutching her burnt ears. The doctor in charge was taken aback by the unusual injury and couldn't help but ask, how did you manage to burn both of your ears like that? The blonde woman looked a little embarrassed as she replied, well, I was trying to iron my work suit and the phone rang. Without thinking, I picked up the iron and put it to my ear instead of the phone. The doctor nodded sympathetically, thinking that the explanation made sense for one burnt ear but then he noticed that both of her ears were equally burnt. Perplexed, he asked. I can understand how one ear got burnt, but what about the other ear? The blonde woman looked puzzled for a moment before realization dawned on her face. Oh, that, she exclaimed. Well, I had to call the ambulance, didn't I? <laughs> so a man is lying in the hospital waiting to be the first person in history to receive a brain transplant. A doctor comes in and says congratulations. But unfortunately, since this is a new procedure, your insurance isn't going to cover it all. So we're going to give you three choices for brains and you can decide which you can afford. Okay, what are they? Says the man to the doctor. The doctor says, well, First, there's engineer brain, that's $100 an ounce. Then there's astrophysicist brain, that'll cost you $200 an ounce. Finally, there's politician brain, that's the most expensive at $1,000 an ounce. The man looks at the doctor, surprised. That's absurd. Why is the politician brain so expensive? The doctor turns to him and says, Sir, do you have any idea how many politicians it takes to get an ounce of brain? <laughs> so, 
Three old men were at the doctor for a memory test. The doctor asked, the first old man, what's two times two? 194, came the reply. The doctor turned to the second old man, what's two times two? Thursday, replied the second old man. Finally, the doctor asked the third old man, what's two times two? Four, came the answer. That's great, said the doctor. How did you get that? Simple, said the third old man. I subtracted 194 from Thursday. <laughs> so a young farm couple, Homer and Darlene, got married and just couldn't seem to get enough loving. In the morning, before Homer left the house for the fields, they made love. When Homer came back from the fields, they made love. And again at bedtime, they made love. The problem was their nooner. It took Homer a half hour to travel home and another half hour to return to the fields, and he just wasn't getting enough work done. Finally, Homer asked the town doctor what to do. Homer, said the doctor, just take your rifle out to the field with you, and when you're in the mood, fire off a shot into the air. That will be Darlene's signal to come out to you. Then you won't lose any field time. They tried Doc's advice, and it worked well for a while. Homer came back to the doctor's office. What's wrong? asked the doc. Didn't my idea work? Oh, it worked real good, said Homer. Whenever I was in the mood, I fired off a shot, like you said, and Darlene would come running. We'd find a secluded place, make love, and then she'd go back home again. Good, Homer. So what's the problem? Asked the doc. I ain't seen her since hunting season started. <laughs> so a guy goes into a doctor's office and tells his doctor he wants to live forever. The doctor says, sure, I can make you live forever, but you have to do exactly as I say. The guy eagerly agrees. The doctor says, First, you must cut out all sugar in your diet. No exceptions. Come back in a month, and I will give you the next step. The guy goes home, and for the next month is very strict on his diet, and has no sugar at all. After the month passes, he returns to the doctor's office. The doctor asks if he followed his diet strictly with no exceptions, to which the guy nods his head. Okay, says the doctor. Your next step is to cut out all caffeine. Come back next month, and I will tell you the final step. The guy is hesitant, but returns home and does as the doctor says. A month goes by, and the guy returns after following the doctor's steps and cutting caffeine and sugar out of his diet. But it's made him a lot more irritable. The doctor says, The last step is to cut sex out of your life. No more lovemaking ever again. Finally, the guy has had enough and demands, how is this possibly going to make me live forever? The doctor says, it won't, but it'll sure as hell feel like forever. <laughs> so after his exam, the doctor said to the elderly man, you appear to be in good health. Do you have any medical concerns you would like to ask me about? In fact, I do, said the old man, after I make love to my wife. The first time I am usually hot and sweaty, and then after we make love the second time, I am usually cold and chilly. After examining his elderly wife, the doctor said, everything appears to be fine. Do you have any medical concerns that you would like to discuss with me? The lady replied that she had no questions or concerns. The doctor then said to her, Your husband had an unusual concern. He claims that he is usually hot and sweaty after making love with you the first time, and then cold and chilly after the second time. Do you know why? Oh, that crazy old fart, she replied. That's because the first time is usually in August, 
and the second time is in January. <laughs> so, a husband decides to join his wife for the first time playing golf. He's never really been into the game, but since his wife was playing with all these men around, he wanted to come and check it out. All day long, he complains, about the heat, about the other people, about how long it's taking. They are on the nine the green when suddenly he collapses from a heart attack. Help me, he groans to his wife. The wife calls 911 on her cell phone, talks for a few minutes, picks up her putter and lines up her putt. Her husband raises his head off the green and stares at her. I'm dying over here, and you're putting? Don't worry, dear, says the wife calmly. They found a doctor on the second hole, and he's coming to help you. Well, how long will it take for him to get here? He asks feebly. No time at all, says his wife. Everybody's already agreed to let him play through. <laughs> So a husband notices his wife's hearing is deteriorating and decides to visit her doctor for advice. I can't speak to my wife directly as she might find it offensive given our old age, he says to the doc. There's a simple trick you can try to determine her hearing, explains the doctor. Simply ask her a question at a distance and if she doesn't hear you, Move slightly closer and ask again until she does. That night, the husband arrives home and sees his wife in the kitchen cooking. He thinks to himself, what a perfect opportunity to test her hearing. He stands in the doorway of the kitchen and promptly asks, what's for dinner, honey? No answer. He moves closer. What's for dinner, honey? Still no answer. He moves even closer. What's for dinner, honey? Still, his wife doesn't answer. He now sees how serious her hearing problem is. At this point, he is standing right next to his wife. What's for dinner, honey? For the fourth damn time, we're having chicken. <laughs> so, a mother and her teen daughter arrive at the doctor's office. The doctor says, okay, what seems to be the problem? The mother replied, it's my daughter Susie. She keeps getting these cravings. She's putting on weight and is sick most mornings. The doctor gives Susie a good examination and then turns to the mother and says, well, I don't know how to tell you this, but Susie is pregnant. About three months would be my guess. The mother says, pregnant? She can't be. She has never, ever been left alone with a man. Have you, Susie? Susie says, No, Mom. I've never even kissed a man. The doctor walks over to the window and just stares out of it. A few moments later, the mother says, Is there something wrong out there, doctor? The doctor replies, No, not really. It's just that the last time something like this happened, a star appeared in the east, and three wise men came over the hill. I'll be darned if I'm going to miss it this time. <laughs> so a man went to the doctor. He said, Doc, you gotta check my leg. Something's wrong. Just put your ear up to my thigh. You'll hear it. The doctor cautiously placed his ear to the man's thigh, only to hear, Gimme twenty bucks. I really need 20 bucks. I've never seen or heard anything like this before. How long has this been going on? The doctor asked. That's nothing, doc. Put your ear to my knee. The doctor put his ear to the man's knee and heard it say, Man, I really need 10 bucks. Just lend me 10 bucks. Sir, I really don't know what to tell you. I've never seen anything like this. The doctor was dumbfounded. Wait, doc, that's not it. There's more. Just put your ear up to my ankle. The man urged him. The doctor did as the man said and was blown away to hear his ankle plead. Please, 
I just need five bucks. Lend me five bucks, please, if you can. I have no idea what to tell you, the doctor said. There's nothing about it in my books, he said, as he frantically searched all his medical reference books. I can make a well-educated guess, though. Based on life and all my previous experience, I can tell you that your leg appears to be broke in three places. <laughs> so one day, a woman named Mrs. Terry decided to visit the clinic to address some health concerns she'd been experiencing. She was a kind-hearted woman in her 60s, a loving mother of four grown children and a doting grandmother to seven wonderful grandchildren. As she entered the clinic, she nervously looked around, taking in the sterile environment and the bustling activity of the medical staff. She was promptly greeted by a friendly receptionist who guided her to the examination room where one of the older doctors would attend to her. After a few minutes in the examination room, Mrs. Terry suddenly burst out of the room, screaming at the top of her lungs and running down the hallway. Startled by the commotion, a young doctor rushed to her side, trying to understand what had caused her distress. The younger doctor, full of concern, gently guided Mrs. Terry to a nearby room, helping her sit down and regain her composure. As she caught her breath, she explained the reason for her outburst. Feeling a sense of responsibility and annoyance at his colleague's actions, the younger doctor marched back to the examination room where the older doctor was still busy writing on his clipboard. With a stern look, the young doctor demanded, What's the matter with you? Mrs. Terry is 63 years old. She has four grown children and seven grandchildren, and you told her she was pregnant? The older doctor looked up from his clipboard, a sly grin spreading across his face. Cured her hiccups, though, didn't it? <laughs> so a married couple was in a terrible accident where the man's face was severely burned. The doctor told the husband that they couldn't graft any skin from his body because he was too skinny. So the wife offered to donate some of her own skin. However, the only skin on her body that the doctor felt was suitable would have to come from her buttocks. The husband and wife agreed that they would tell no one about where the skin came from, and they requested that the doctor also honor their secret. After all, this was a very delicate matter. After the surgery was completed, everyone was astounded at the man's new face. He looked more handsome than he ever had before. All his friends and relatives just went on and on about his youthful beauty. One day, he was alone with his wife, and he was overcome with emotion at her sacrifice. He said, Dear, I just want to thank you for everything you did for me. How can I possibly repay you? My darling, she replied. I get all the thanks I need every time I see your mother kiss you on the cheek. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>